The story of the Honorable El Shaima J. Quigley. El Shaima J. Quigley, a member of the Tanzanian Parliament, considers albinism as much a disorder as any other form of impairment of the human body, but in Tanzania it is a condition that causes many albinos to hide in fear for their lives. Many Tanzanians believe that albinism is a curse, and the body parts of albinos are used by healers to prepare and sell potions that bring wealth and good luck. Quagga spoke at the Voices, Every Victim of Racism Has a Story to Tell section, which is held daily as part of the Durban Review Conference. Kivir was born in a family in which three out of nine children are albinos. She was more fortunate than many other sufferers of albinism. Our parents and relatives loved us. There was no stigmatization in the family, she recalled. When Gwagir asked her mother why she was all white and why this happened to her, her mother always assured her that there was nothing wrong with it. But the fate of many albinos is very different. They are often abandoned by their families in some tribes, they are killed immediately after birth, hunted and killed, and their organs are used by medicine men. Statistics on the number of albinos in Tanzania are not available, but albinism is much more widespread in Africa than on other continents. Worldwide, approximately one person out of every is affected by albinism, it is a genetic disorder caused by a lack or complete absence of pigment in the skin, the membranes of the eyes and hair. In Tanzania, only a small number of albinos manage to continue their education after primary school, and it is very difficult for them to get a job. According to Quego, the scale of poverty among albinos is alarming. Poverty does not allow albinos to enjoy proper medical care to prevent skin cancer, which is widespread among albinos, especially in the tropical zone. With the support of her family, Quagga was able, despite the daily resentments she faced outside of her home, to finish high school and enter the civil service. For years, she has fought for the recognition of albino rights in Tanzania, and finally last year, her efforts were recognized by the country's president, who appointed her as a member of parliament. With the support of the government, Quagga is currently campaigning in support of all persons with disabilities and various disabilities, and in particular albinos. At one of the first sessions of the Voices section, Union Deputy High Commissioner for Human Rights Con Wokang reminded delegates that, against the background of this huge and important Massachusetts of words, we must never forget that these words should describe real events in the lives, struggles and sufferings of people. During the week, 15 people will talk about their personal experiences with racism in scheduled daily sessions. The Voices section was first organized at the Durban Conference Against Racism in 2001. Hank called the participants of Voices the main event of the conference. Your stories reflect the challenges that all of us here must face. They will inspire us and remind us of the real impact of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance on the lives of people around the world.